Good morning. I'm Dr. Matt Ravenscroft, principal of Kaiser High School, and it is my honor to welcome you to the 78th 
Jonah Edward Kelly Award ceremony at Church McKee Art Center on the campus of Potomac State College. We're here today to honor the memory and sacrifice of KHS alumnus Jonah Edward Kelly and to bestow one of our seniors, Anthony Mealy, Gabe Ryan, or Caden Youngblood, with an award in his namesake. This morning, we will hear about his sacrifice in Europe during World War II, but like thousands of other GIs, he was a high school student like you not long before he died serving our country. However, unlike his peers, when the opportunity came to be a selfless leader and do what was right and necessary to save others, he seized the opportunity to lead. One theme that will be evident from his life as an athlete and soldier is his leadership. Leadership is sacrificial, it always does what is right, and it moves and impacts others to do the same. Leadership improves families, schools, businesses, churches, and entire communities. Jonah Edward Kelly was a leader. Representing the West Virginia Army National Guard is Sergeant First Class Hotchkiss, Sergeant First Class Orange, Sergeant First Class Pirano, and Private Radcliffe. They will now present our colors, followed by the national anthem from our KHS concert band and Pledge of Allegiance by senior class president, Trenton Denny. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all.
Franklin Delano Roosevelt once said, freedom lives and through it, he lives in a way that humbles the undertakings of most men. As we come together today, April 28th, 2023, we remember the humility and sacrifice of Jonah Edward Kelly. Commemorating a war hero like Ed Kelly is a tradition that Kaiser High School will hopefully continue for many years to come. Kaiser, as a community, comes together every April to remember and celebrate the life of Ed Kelly in conjunction with the three young men who hold the ideals and qualities that Jonah Edward Kelly possessed. Our program in its 78th year was started by four coaches who are all members of the Kaiser Loyal Order of Moose Lodge number 662. The first award program was held in March 1946. Our first winner, Robert Dorsey, received an 18 jewel gold Elgin Deluxe pocket watch as an award. The two runners up received fountain pens. Throughout the years, members of the 78th Lightning Division Veterans Association have attended our program in large numbers. They have traveled from all parts of the United States to be a part of our community. We have always welcomed these men and their families with open arms and hearts. Today, we have one member with us that has faithfully attended our program for over 40 years. At this time, we would like to recognize Stuart Brandout from Woodbridge, New Jersey. Thanks, Stu, for your continued support and dedication to Kaiser and our community. Also, we would like to Frank thank his friend Vito, who brings him to Kaiser each spring. We are so blessed to know you both. Over the years, changes have been made to the program. In 1977, the association presented a $100 scholarship to the winner and also changed the pocket watch award to a wristwatch. In 1988, the association established a Perpetual Sergeant Ed Kelly Scholarship Fund, and through donations by the members and investments by the association, the scholarship awarded today is $6,000. In 1987, with the scholarship at $900, the winner shared his scholarship with the other two finalists. This unselfish gesture is still practiced today. On October 28, 1988, the J. Edward Kelly Society was founded. A medallion was struck and it became the award presented to the winner along with the scholarship. The medallion, approximately two and a half inches in diameter and containing six emblems associated with the requirements of the award is worn around the neck, suspended by a red, white, and blue ribbon. All previous winners were presented the new medallion and given membership in the J. Edward Kelly Society. Starting in 1991, all three finalists are inducted into the J. Edward Kelly Society. Now, Let's go back to the humble beginnings of a man who changed the course of history in the community of Kaiser forever. In a remote mountain settlement of West Virginia in 1923, a boy was born whose destiny lay with a war that was yet to be. 100 years ago, on Friday, April 13th, shortly after 9 p.m., Ed Kelly was born at the home of his maternal grandparents during a lashing storm that had raged all day and into the night. As a baby, Eddie contented himself with pots and pans for playthings. In his early infancy, he cried for attention, and Rebecca, his mother, was afraid he would become spoiled, so she let him cry it out. He stopped crying in record time and became a model baby with a cheerful disposition, which was later to become a trademark of his developing personality. Ed was growing up and was now five years old. He took an active interest in everything he saw. It should not be supposed that the Kellys lived in the lap of luxury. Their rented house during this time had no indoor plumbing, so they took sponge baths in wooden wash tubs with water toted up from the creek. The privy was in the backyard. Ed started school and made new friends quickly. His clothes were made out of flour sacks and feed bags, but this caused him no embarrassment. Most of his friends were in the same boat. He had a good pair of trousers, which he wore to church and another pair for all other occasions. Ed loved to play kick the can on his way to and from school, taking back alleys to achieve the maximum effect with his sport. Having a few toys of commercial manufacture, Ed made his own, sometimes with considerable imagination. His mind was constantly active and his determination never wavered in carrying some project through to completion. One of his best ideas was damming up a section of New Creek to make a swimming hole for the neighborhood kids. 
New Creek was a bass breeding stream for rivers, and one day the fish and game reserve officer ordered Ed to dismantle the dam so the bass could swim upstream at spawning time. Undeterred, Ed made a trap door out of an old Coca-Cola sign and attached it to the bottom of the dam. It worked like a charm. The fish got through, the game warden was happy, and the kids kept their swimming hole that lasted several years. As they grew older, Ed and his friends improvised on the game of tag in numerous ways. They played a game called Fox and Chickens, in which two opposing teams lined up, challenging each other to break through the lines. The challengers were then tackled, and those tackled and down would then join the others in warding off the next challengers. It was rough and tumble, but good preparation for Ed's football days, which were soon to come. In Ed's life, sports and church were inseparably linked. If a boy wanted the best in sports, he joined the Young People's Church Group, or the MYF, Methodist Youth Fellowship. In the meantime, Ed also joined the Boy Scouts of America. By the time Ed had reached his teens, his reputation for honesty had become proverbial, but he much preferred to stay out of the limelight and was painfully shy when people made a fuss over him. The church motto at Grace Methodist read, Whatsoever thou findest to do, do it with all thy might. Ed took that motto to heart. Both of Ed's football coaches considered him to be one of their most valuable players. During his junior year, Ed worked in the school office running errands, answering telephones, or doing odd jobs whenever he had an hour or two of free time. Many that worked with Ed said he was a good student, a good worker, and exceptionally polite. Ed graduated from Kaiser High School in June of 1941. He made immediate plans to enter Potomac State that fall and got himself a summer job at the Salonese plant in nearby Cumberland, Maryland. That fall, Ed did enter Potomac State Junior College and plunged into a busy schedule of classes and football. Ed wore the number 78 emblazoned on his jersey. In one of the games, he cracked three ribs but didn't tell his family about it. He just taped himself up and went quietly about his business. Ed sprained an ankle in another game while playing defensive end, but continued to play until the game was over. Ed and his best friends primed themselves for acti active service in World War II by staying after school to work out in the gymnasium, climbing ropes, and doing calisthenics to toughen themselves up for basic training. Ed was in a rage to go into service like the older boys, but had to wait until he was called. One of his close friends got a job at the Kaiser Draft Board and called Ed to let him know that his name would be coming up, but it was not until a whole year away. Ed decided not to enroll at Potomac State a second year and told his parents he wanted to live a little before going into the service. Ed got a job as a produce manager for the American Food Store and bided his time while waiting for his draft notice to materialize. All of the boys had talked enthusiastically about the branch of service they wanted to join, and Ed held out for the Marines. Ed talked of nothing else until he finally hopped on a bus for Clarksburg, where he took a physical exam for the Marine Corps. To his astonishment, they told him he had a form of color blindness and turned him down. Ed was crushed. Their tests must have been wrong. On the bus trip home, he turned over his options, one by one. The Navy, if he got torpedoed, he'd have a long swim home. The Air Force, too little control with his feet off the ground. The Army, he could run faster than he could swim or fly, so that had to be the answer. He'd take another physical for the Army and see what they thought about his eyes. Ed finally received his pre-induction physical notice from the County Health Office, which instructed him to report on December 15, 1942 at 9 a.m. for his physical. He passed with flying colors and his eyes checked out normally. The Marines must have been crazy. On March 16, 1943, Ed reported to Fort Hayes with his detachment of 62 raw recruits. Ed learned that he was to be sent to basic training to a place called Camp Butner in North Carolina. He was launched almost immediately into a rigorous training program in the field and on the firing range. Ed was assigned to Company E, 1st Platoon, 311th Infantry Regiment, and was to remain with Company E for the rest of his life. Ed picked up the rigors of combat training in earnest, getting up at 4 a.m. and hiking 60 miles in 12 hours. His marksmanship was improving at a distance of 300 feet, where he scored near perfect from sitting, squatting, and prone positions. The day of his second paycheck, Ed wrote his father, 
The first pay was $12, and this one is $37.25. I am sending home $20. I won't need it. There is nothing to spend it on here. After training at Camp Butner, North Carolina, he would soon leave his beloved country to fight in waist-deep snow in Kesternick, Germany, where some of the 78th had already seen action in the ruthless Battle of the Bulge. For 160 years, presidents have awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor to outstanding soldiers. Jonah Edward Kelly of Kaiser, West Virginia, received this medal posthumously for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his own life. His Congressional Medal of Honor citation reads, Staff Sergeant Jonah Edward Kelly, 311th Infantry Division, displayed conspicuous gallantry in action on 30-31 January 1945 at Kesternick, Germany. In charge of the leading of squad of Company E, he heroically spearheaded the attack in furious house-to-house -house fighting. Early on 30 January, he led his men through intense mortar and small arms fire and repeated assaults on barricaded houses. Although twice wounded, once when struck in the back, the second time when a mortar shell fragment passed through his left hand and rendered it practically useless, he refused to withdraw and continued to lead his squad after hasty dressings had been applied. His serious wounds forced him to fire his rifle with one hand, resting it on rubble or over his left forearm. To blast his way forward with hand grenades, he set aside his rifle to pull the pins with his teeth while grasping the missiles with his good hand. Despite his handicaps, he created tre tremendous havoc in enemy ranks. He rushed one house, killing three of the enemy and clearing the way for his squad to advance. On approaching the next house, he was fired upon from an upstairs window. He killed the sniper with a single shot and similarly accounted for another enemy soldier who ran from the cellar of the house. As darkness came, he assigned his men to defensive positions, never leaving them to seek medical attention. <clears throat> At dawn the next day, the squad resumed the attack, advancing to a point where heavy automatic and small arms fire stalled them. Despite his wounds, Sergeant Kelly moved out alone, located an enemy gunner dug in under a haystack and killed him with rifle fire. He returned to his men and found that a German machine gun from a well-protected position in a neighboring house still held up the advance. Ordering his squad to remain in comparatively safe positions, he valiantly dashed into the open and attacked the position single-handedly through a hail of bullets. He was hit several times and fell to his knees when within 25 yards of his objective. But he summoned his waning strength and emptied his rifle into the machine gun nest, silencing the weapon before he died. The superb courage, aggressiveness, and utter disregard for his own safety displayed by Sergeant Kelly inspired the men he led and enabled them to penetrate the last line of defense held by the enemy in the village of Kesternick. Today, we honor three young men who held the ideals and qualities that Staff Sergeant Jonah Edward Kelly possessed. The winner, like Ed Kelly, has to be an all-around American boy, scholar, and athlete. He is also expected to excel in scholastic standing where the young man must display at least a 2.0 grade point average. Nominees must be eligible for sports all four years at Kaiser High School by participating in either football or basketball in grades nine through 12. These two sports are identified because Ed Kelly participated in these sports while attending our high school. Other areas that are considered in the candidates are ultimately the winner are citizenship, morals, sportsmanship, church attendance, community and country loyalty, integrity, sobriety, and observance of the law. The young man must display leadership and patriotism. Moreover, the candidate should demonstrate courtesy and be sincere in his work. After the three nominees submit an essay, the winner is then selected by a special anonymous committee. Let us review our candidates before the winner is announced. As you view our screen, you will see our first nominee, Anthony Carlton Mealy. Anthony is the son of Philip and Holly Mealy. He holds a cumulative grade point average of 3.9. Anthony has participated in football, basketball, and track for all four years at Kaiser High School. He served as co-captain of the football team during his senior year. During high school, Anthony was a member of Kaiser Crazies, the National Honor Society, and the Math Honor Society. He has volunteered his time with the Kaiser High School Youth Football Camp, Kaiser High School Youth Track Meet, Little People's Daycare, and Potomac State College Softball. 
Anthony also helped remodel the Kaiser High School weight room. He attends the Assumption Church of Kaiser. In the future, Anthony plans to attend Alderson Broadus, where he will play sprint football and pursue a degree in education. Anthony's biggest inspiration in life has been his dad. Anthony says he has taught him the importance of being humble. The second nominee is Gabriel Isaac Ryan. Gabe's parents are Ashley and Jeremy Claus and Daniel Ryan. He has a cum cumulative grade point average of 3.89. For sports, Gabe has participated in football all four years at Kaiser High School. He was captain of the football team this year. He has also ran track and field for his sophomore through senior years. In 2020, Gabe played baseball and wrestled for one year. Clubs and activities for Gabe include Key Club, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, FFA, and the Kaiser Crazies. The community service that Gabe volunteered to perform was helping at youth football camps the state track meet in 2022 at the local food pantry and painting the school. The church Gabe attends is the Emanuel Church in Kaiser. His future goal is to play football for Frostburg State University while studying a dual major in physical education and parks and recreation. Gabe's biggest inspirations are his pappy and papa, his maternal and paternal grandfathers. Gabe feels that their influence has taught him patience and how to work hard in life. Last but not least, we present to you our third nominee, Caden Joseph Youngblood. Caden's parents are Matthew and Crystal Youngblood. Caden holds a cumulative grade point average of 4.343. In grades 9 through 12, Caden participated in football and baseball. He served as the defensive captain for the football team and baseball captain in his senior year. Caden has volunteered by serving as the West Virginia Boys State elected Supreme Court Justice by serving Easter goodie bags to local nursing homes, volunteering for church Christmas and Easter programs, and reading to students for the Energy Express program. Caden attends the Emeryville United Methodist Church in Elk Garden. His future goals include obtaining a bachelor's degree in computer science from West Virginia University after attending Potomac State College. He also hopes to be a leader in his community and a good provider for his family. Caden's biggest inspiration is his father for doing all that he can to care and provide for Caden and his family. Each candidate, after viewing and listening to their accomplishments, deserves this honor. We are so lucky to have an ideal role model who comes from our high school, attended our local college, and was drafted to fight in a war where he had lost his life. The life of Jonah Edward Kelly will never be forgotten as long as those loyal to him continue to keep his memory alive. It is our job to never forget those who sacrifice the ultimate price, his or her life. Our centenarian, Ed Kelly, would have been 100 years old if he was living today. Hopefully, in 100 more years, the memory of Ed Kelly and the other 42 who lost their lives during World War II from the community of Kaiser will still be revered and remembered. Too many times, good people are forgotten. Let us make sure that this doesn't happen. Will Carlton, an American poet, wrote, Cover them over with beautiful flowers. Deck them with garlands, those brothers of ours. Lying so silent by night and by day, sleeping the years of their manhood away. Give them the mead they have won in the past. Give them their honors, their future forecasts. Give them the chaplets they won in the strife. Give them the laurels they lost with their life.
James E. Fortney. Absent. James Quinn. Absent. Raymond L. Green. Absent. William E. Jack. Absent. Craig W. Haynes. Absent. Lawrence Joe. Absent. Roy H. Hanlon. Absent. Robert E. Smith. Absent. Charles J. Johnson. Absent. Robert Stittler. Absent. J. Edward Kelly. Absent. Robert T. Taylor. Absent. Keith C. Kephart. Absent. Joseph C. Weaver. Absent. Bernard Kimmel. Absent. Rex Wharton. Absent. William Kirkendall. Absent. Joseph S. White. Absent. Gene Wolfen. Absent. <laughs>
services, uh, beginning with, as we announced earlier, our member of the 78th Lightning Division, honorary citizen of Kaiser, and 90 years young, Sergeant Stu Brandau of Woodbridge, New Jersey. I'd also like to introduce our three nominees and their families, beginning with Anthony Mealy, his parents, Philip and Holly Mealy, brother Benjamin Mealy, grandparents John and Beverly Ward, and uncle Jason Ward. Our nominee, Gabriel Ryan, with his mother, Ashley Claus, stepfather, Jeremy Claus, father, Daniel Ryan, grandmother, Connie Adams, grandfather, Paul Adams, grandmother, Chris Claus, grandfather, Bill Claus, grandmother, Terry Ryan, grandfather, Rodney Ryan, brother, Trevor Claus, sister, Peyton Claus, brother, Connor Claus, brother, Elijah Ryan, and brother, Adam Ryan. And our nominee, Caden Youngblood, his mother, Crystal Youngblood, father, Matt Youngblood, brother, Ashton Youngblood, grandmother, Deb Pennington, grandfather, Tom Youngblood, uncle, Haas Pennington, and aunt, Donna Pennington. Our president of the Kelly Society, Mr. Randy Cirillo. <laughs> Members of the Kelly Society in attendance from 1948, represented by his wife, Dallas Adams. From 1952, Jennings Stickley. 1961, James Currier. 1967, Larry Taylor. 1975, Robert Eagle. 1978, Tim Schwanabart and Randy Cirillo. 1981, Jeffrey Kuhn. 1983, Scott Robal. 1985, Jeffrey Staggers. 1997, Adam Brathwaite. From 1998, Lucas Taylor and John Haynes Jr. 1999, Brent Barrick. 2001, Donald Hetrick II. 2003, Jeffrey Newland, 2005, Michael Staggers, 2006, Chris Zaffron, 2008, Tyler Logston, 2010, Logan Del Signor, 2013, Joshua Golub, 2015, Ryan Streets, 2018, Brady Hours, 2021, Derek Broadwater and Bradley Summers, and from 2022, Seth Ernest and EJ Guy. Our representative presenting the award from the Loyal Order of the Moose, Jeff Staggers. President of Potomac State College, Dr. Gilmer. <laughs> Superintendent of Mineral County Schools, Mr. Ravenscroft, and Assistant Superintendent, Ms. Wilson. <laughs> Our KHS Assistant Principal, Mrs. Droppelman, and Director of Bands, Ms. Wart. Also, in our guests, I'd also like to rec recognize our staff of KHS and our students of KHS. <laughs> Director of Supply Chain Management at ABL, Chris Fritz. <laughs> KHS alumnus and manager of Vertex Partners, Scott Rotruck. And finally, our speaker, 
Colonel Sean M. Frisbee. Sean Frisbee is a retired United States Air Force Colonel, entrepreneur, and defense industry expert. He is a senior executive with more than 30 years of experience leading Air Force programs, small business defense companies, and an academic nonprofit. Sean holds his Bachelor of Science in Aerospace Engineering from West Virginia University and his Master's in Aeronautical Sciences from Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University. He is also a graduate of the Air Force's School of Advanced Air and Space Studies and a former National Defense Fellow. Sean started his work in the United States Air Force as an engineer but quickly rose through the ranks, eventually working at the Pentagon as the director of the F-22 Budget Office. From there, he served in Operations Deliberate Guard, Decisive Edge, Northern Watch, and Iraqi Freedom, including a one-year tour in Baghdad, where he was responsible for developing and executing the strategy for rebuilding the Iraqi Air Force. During his tenure, the initiative strengthened the Iraqi Air Force personnel from 1,200 to 3,000 in a year and more than tripled their aircraft complement. Sean concluded his 22-year 20 year Air Force career as the F-22 Systems Program Director responsible for the design, production, deployment, modernization, and sustainment of the $66 billion F-22 Stealth Fighter weapon system. This role required him to manage over 200 government and more than 1,700 industry personnel dispersed across the country with a budget of $4 billion in annual expenditures. <laughs> Following his time in the Air Force, Sean pivoted to the private sector, holding successive executive positions in a number of startups and defense companies. He returned to his alma mater, WVU, in 2015 to serve as the eighth president and CEO of the West Virginia University Alumni Association. In this role, Sean's team created an industry-leading virtual business network and established alumni chapters worldwide, setting a standard for alumni engagement. Sean retired from his tenure at the WVU Alumni Association in 2021 to spearhead his next effort, the founding of Vertex Partners, a federal business strategy firm that identifies and matches entrepreneurs, technologies, small business, and non-traditional defense contractors with partners, investors, suppliers, and the Department of Defense to solve national security challenges. With this latest development in his career, Sean has tied all aspects of his professional life together into one unified vision that bridges the gaps between the public, private, academic, and non-private sectors. When he isn't working to solve problems for the Department of Defense, Sean is an avid runner and backpacker in his free time, having hiked the Colorado Trail in 2021. He has two children, Jacob, who lives in New York City, and Leah, who attends West Virginia University. Please join me in welcoming Colonel Sean Frisbee. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everyone. How about a round of applause for the Kaiser High School Concert Band? What a great job you've done here. <laughs> Distinguished guests, Kaiser High School student body, teachers, administrators, parents, friends, nominees, members of the Kaiser community, welcome and many thanks for inviting me to be the guest speaker at the 78th Ed Kelly Award Ceremony. When Scott Rotruck, who is a Kaiser High School alum and is sitting here in the audience, first approached me about this event and speaking, I was quite excited. Dr. Ravenscroft sent me an invitation, I immediately accepted, and then shortly thereafter, I received an email from Randy Cirillo, who was the president of the J. Edward Kelly Society. And I was good to go until one of his attachments that I opened up listed all of the prior speakers. And they included multiple members of the U.S. House of Representatives, presidents from multiple universities, U.S. Senators, West Virginia Governors, the Secretary of the Navy, the Secretary of the Army, the late Woody Williams, who himself was a Medal of Honor winner, an astronaut, 
And, a list of, and the list of dignitaries goes on and on. And I'm thinking to myself, holy smokes, what in the world did I get myself into? I mean, come on. Old Air Force colonel who spent most of his life developing weapon systems, not operating them, speaking at an event that honors a Medal of Honor winner, who single-handedly took out a machine gun bunker after days of fighting door to door in the freezing cold with little sleep and wounded to the point to where his left hand didn't work and he had to pull the pen from grenades with his teeth? Are you kidding me? How in the world could I possibly deserve this? Do any of you watch SEAL Team on Paramount? Yeah, we got a few folks out there. Well, SEAL Team is about a tier one SEAL unit called Bravo. And Bravo undertakes special missions around the world. And as you can imagine, they're a tight-knit team. They're involved in the most dangerous activities imaginable. And they are trained to the hilt. It's made, it's made for TV, so there's clearly some cinematic liberties taken. But, Ra but Bravo represents men amongst men, the baddest of the bad. And you know what members of Bravo calls guys like me? Air Force colonels who are generally riding a desk and not kicking in doors, cake eaters. And I will tell you, this person, when I put on this uniform this morning, maybe has eaten a little too much cake in the last few years, so, but cake eaters. Well, I'll tell you that it's a true honor for this cake eater to be standing before you today, honoring the legacy of one of America's real life heroes. Staff Sergeant J. Edward Kelly. There was no cinematic nothing about what Sergeant Kelly did. It was the real deal. Amid a great war, on top of his game, when his team needed him most. His actions were real, and today we honor his sacrifice. But Sergeant Kelly's legacy continues to live on, and we have the opportunity to recognize the work of three of America's future leaders sitting right here who have been nominated to receive the J. Edward Kelly Award for 2023. Anthony, Gabe, Caden, congratulations, and how about a round of applause for our nominees? Since 1946, this community has come together just like we are today to honor the legacy of Sergeant Kelly and his ultimate sacrifice for our nation, while at the same time recognizing today's young leaders and our hope for the future. Although Sergeant Kelly was young when he perished, he had an enormous impact on his community, his friends, his family, his army unit, and all those around him. Sergeant Kelly, as we heard earlier, was a Boy Scout. He was a leader at the local Methodist Youth Fellowship. He was a student athlete. And although the Marines didn't work out for him when he first volunteered, he didn't give up his calling to serve his country. He pressed on to the Army where he went through training and demonstrated excellence. He was promoted early. He shined above his peers and eventually received the highest recognition possible, the Congressional Medal of Honor. When I read Sergeant Kelly's biography, including his citation for the Medal of Honor, many descriptors came to mind. Gallantry, intrepidity, above and beyond the call of duty, selflessness, unwavering devotion, heroism, leadership, service, community. Sergeant Kelly exemplified each one of these traits, and today I want to spend a few minutes talking about three of them. Leadership, service, and community. These are three very important traits for each of us to reflect on because they not only impact our own lives, but they impact the lives of those around us. Leadership. There's no doubt that Sergeant Kelly demonstrated leadership and did so long before his final fight. We know he was a formal leader at the Methodist Youth Fellowship, and we know that he led training for his peers early in his Army career. And I'm guessing that his classmates would tell us that he was a leader on the gridiron, 
and he, his teachers would tell us that he was a leader in his classroom. But how did he become a leader so early in life? This is a question that is worth considering and discussing, and there are other questions equally as important to consider. Is one born a leader, or is leadership something that can be learned? What makes an effective leader? Does one have to be appointed as a leader to effectively lead, and so on? The literature is filled with research and stories of great leaders. For those of you who are about to head off to college, you'll find that leadership is a popular area of study in all institutions of higher education. I've been fortunate in my life to have worked for and been influenced by some of the greatest leaders of our time. A few of them you would know and others you may have never heard about. In my experience, some people are born with a level of natural leadership ability and because of that they have a head start. But the greatest leaders, whether they are born with that innate skill or not, become great leaders through learning. Nobody is born with great leadership skills. Everybody learns. I've been a student of leadership my entire adult life and continue to learn. What I've observed and experienced is that there are three ways to learn leadership. First, you study and you learn it. You read about the great leaders, how they act, the decisions they make, and what they think about. You read the research and you do your best to understand leadership principles you learn from history. One of the many things that people do not understand about the U.S. military is that more than anything else, the military is a training organization and leadership is part and parcel to all training. Our soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, coast guardsmen, and now guardians from the U.S. Space Force spend much more of their time training than they do fighting. I didn't realize this about our military until late in my career when I was a brand new colonel and sent over to Iraq to rebuild the Iraqi Air Force. We had destroyed their entire Air Force. Their aircraft were either blown up or buried, their runways were, were cratered, hangars were destroyed, and members of the Iraqi Air Force were disbanded. By having to start from scratch, and build an entire Air Force, it forced me to understand our Air Force, as well as the other services, in a way that I had never understood it before. We had to build the recruiting pipeline, basic training, we had to teach pilots how to fly, maintainers how to fix aircraft, personnel folks how to do HR, finance people how to pay uh, the troops on and on and on. In building the Iraqi Air Force from the ground up, I discovered the magic of our military. We are able to take people from all walks of life, every socioeconomic background, every belief system, from every corner of America and teach them a common language, how they should act, a set of morals, and a set of ethics. And from what I've seen, nobody in the world, not any academic institution, not any foreign military, not any company, is as good at training as the U.S. military, and it's why we maintain the strongest military in the world. Leadership is a critical component to all training in every service. This is not just true for officers. Everyone is taught leadership, and the study of leadership never ends. A military member will find leadership instruction in virtually everything they do. The second way one learns leadership is to watch and observe. If you carefully watch and observe leaders around you, I guarantee you that you'll learn something about leadership. Sometimes you'll learn more about what not to do than what to do, but you're learning. When I was a major in the Air Force, one of the positions that I held was aide de camp to one of the Air Force's four-star generals. What does an aide do? Well, you spend your waking hours with the four-star ensuring that all things in their life are taken care of so that they can concentrate every moment of their time on their job. This means sometimes you're the secretary, sometimes you're the note taker, sometimes you're the bag carrier, sometimes you're just trying to get the four stars something to eat so they can maintain their energy level. The bottom line is you're around the person seven days a week from the time they get up until they go to sleep. 
I happened to be in that position on September 11, 2001, when the Twin Towers were attacked. I was the one who was pulled out of the meeting with the Forest Star and asked to tell the Forest Star that America was under attack. It was a defining moment in my career. One of the benefits of being an aide is that you're a fly on the wall for the highest level meetings. And you have the opportunity to observe and learn at a very young age. In this circumstance, I was a fly on the wall watching America go to war through the eyes of a four-star general. I watched my boss lead in a time of high stress, high uncertainty, and utter chaos. It was a lifetime of lessons in a very short period of time, and it took me years to reflect on what I had learned during that time. Seven years and many assignments later, I was in Iraq, rebuilding the Iraqi Air Force, and our commander was General Petraeus. I'm sure many of you know General Petraeus. I learned a lot of leadership from General Petraeus. Outside, the military has been no different. Until two years ago, when I started my current company, I worked for E. Gordon Gee, the president of West Virginia University. President Gee taught me many leadership lessons, and I'm still learning from the likes of Scott Rotruck sitting down here and Mary Cook, who are sitting right there and teach me something every single day. My point is you never stop learning leadership and observing is one of the primary approaches to becoming an effective leader. The third way to learn leadership is to practice it. You don't have to be a formal leader to be of an organization or a group to be a leader. Informal leadership is vitally important to every initiative. By practicing leadership, you'll learn what works and what doesn't. But you must be open to honest feedback in real introspection. This is tough, and it's why honest feedback is so vitally important. There may come a point where you discover that something you're doing isn't working. The people around you are not responding in a manner that is productive and effective. When you look in the mirror, you may discover that it's not the folks around you that are the problem, it's you. It takes real maturity to recognize this and adjust your leadership style appropriately. If you are deliberate about studying and learning leadership, carefully observing the leaders around you and practicing leadership with honest feedback to yourself, you will become an effective leader. The second trait I garnered from Sergeant Kelly's life that I'd like to talk about is service. Certainly, we could look at Sergeant Kelly's time in the Army, especially during war, and discuss his service to our nation. We could look at the latest numbers and talk about how only 9% of our youth aged 18 to 24 have a propensity to serve in the U.S. military. Whereas merely a decade ago, that number was double and even higher as we go back in time. In this year, 2023, we celebrate, it's the 50th year of the all-volunteer force this year. 50 years ago, the draft ended. But I'd prefer to examine service in a broader sense. The military is merely one place for a person to serve, and clearly that isn't desirable or accessible for everyone. But service in a broader sense, as in helping to improve the well-being of others and making a positive impact in the world, is something that all of us can and should do. Service can be carried out in various ways. You may find yourself in a career that is built around service, such as many of the teachers that we have here today. Your teachers and your administrators are clearly serving their community and improving the well-being of others. I'm sure many others in this audience are in service careers doing excellent work in helping this community today. Other ways to serve are unpaid, such as volunteering, donating time, resources, or simply doing something helpful for someone in need. There's a desperate need in every community for volunteers. It could be in places like soup kitchens, animal shelters, or simply picking up trash along the road. The service these volunteers provide improves the well-being of others and makes a positive impact on their community. The interesting thing about service is it's a two-way street. Not only do service providers benefit the people being served, but we find that service also leads to personal growth and development. 
By serving others, we enhance our social and emotional skills, gain new perspectives, and develop a sense of purpose and meaning in our lives. One way service can help in personal growth is by providing opportunities for social interaction and communication. Serving others enables us to connect with people from diverse backgrounds and cultures, as, which can help broaden our perspective and develop our communication skills. We can learn to understand and respect different opinions, and this can lead to more empathy and compassion towards others. We talked about leadership earlier. Well, service activities provide us with opportunities to develop our leadership and organizational skills. By organizing and leading service projects, we learn how to manage time, resources, and people. This can help us develop confidence in our abilities and lead to future leadership opportunities. Finally, service also provides us with a sense of fulfillment and satisfaction. When we see the positive impact of our service on others, we feel a sense of accomplishment and pride. This can lead to increased self-esteem and overall well-being. If I were a betting man, I'd bet that Sergeant Kelly's service to the Boy Scouts, the Methodist Youth, Youth Fellowship, and other places that we don't even know about helped him with his personal growth and development. Service can help each of us as well. And the final trait Sergeant Kelly exhibited that I'd like to discuss today is community. Sergeant Kelly's community, while he was fighting in World War II, was his unit. They stuck together, they looked out for each other, and they watched each other six. Sergeant Kelly died protecting his community. Prior to joining the Army, his community was right here in Kaiser, West Virginia. And we know how involved he was here. One of the key benefits of being part of a community is the sense of belonging it provides. Being part of a community allows us to connect with others who share similar interests, backgrounds, and values, which can help create a sense of identity and belonging. This sense of connection and belonging helps us feel valued and accepted, which is important for our emotional and mental well-being. Communities also provide support to individuals emotional support during difficult times, practical assistance with daily tasks, resources and service that we may not have otherwise. I cannot overemphasize the importance of communities for each of us. It requires work to maintain a community, but the benefits to each of us are immense. This ceremony serves as a remarkable illustration of an occasion that unites individuals from various corners of the community. Its purpose is to honor the present members of our community while paying tribute to a highly significant past member. I relish the days where community events were standard everywhere, parades, festivals, breakfast for seniors. Not everyone has a strawberry or apple harvest festival. You're lucky here in Kaiser, West Virginia. While it's common to see communities come together during tragic events, or natural disasters, I would suggest that we could all benefit if we come together when the sun is shining, not just when it's raining. It takes leadership and a service mindset to build community, and it requires each of us to participate. Being part of a community enhances the quality of our life, creates a sense of purpose and meaning, and certainly contributes to the greater good of society. Staff Sergeant Kelly taught us a number of valuable lessons in his much too short life, and I'm sure he would be proud to know that his legacy lives on. For the nominees today, I know that only one of you will be selected, but please know that each of you are already recognized as superstars by the virtue that you've earned the right to be a nominee and become a member of the J. Edward Kelly Society. For all the students here today, and especially the seniors, as you move into the next chapter of your life, I encourage you to remember the lessons we learned by examining Sergeant Kelly's contributions. Learn how to be an effective leader, study the greats, observe the leaders around you, and reflect honestly on your leadership effectiveness. Remember, leadership education never ends. Offer your time, 
talents, and treasure to selfless service so that you can improve the well-being of others and make a positive impact on our world. And finally, be a significant part of whatever community you find yourself in. Find your place and how you can participate and your efforts will be rewarded tenfold. I'd like to thank the members of the West Virginia Army National Guard for being here today, presenting the colors, executing the roll call, as well as for your daily service to our nation. For the veterans in the audience, thank you for your service, for the work you do, and for the leadership you provide this wonderful community or whatever community you live in. Stu Brandau, it was a pleasure meeting you. It's not often that we have an opportunity in 2023 to meet a World War II veteran, let alone somebody from the 78th Lightning Division. Thank you for the effort you put into being here today. Dr. Ravenscroft, thank you for inviting me here today to be part of your community in this ceremony. This is truly an honor. Randy and all the members of the Kaiser Moose Lodge, Thank you for leading the J. Edward Kelly Society and ensuring that his legacy lives on. Now I want to recognize somebody who is really the backbone to this ceremony and I'm going to ask if she could possibly step out here. Carrie, can you come out here real quick? Every, every one of these great ceremonies requires somebody that's actually doing all the work, not just up here gabbing away. And what we have here is Carrie Rotruck, who is really the centerpiece. And how about a round of applause for Carrie? Thank you, Carrie. This ceremony would not be possible without her. Thank you, everyone. Godspeed. Best wishes to all. And again, it's been an honor being here with you today. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Frisbee. I'd just like to start by once again congratulating the nominees. You all three are definitely winners, and then we all know that in the future you're going to continue to be winners. Wear this proudly. It has responsibilities, and we know you'll fulfill those going forward. It's a privilege and an honor to be asked to be up here today representing Moose Lodge 662, Kaiser Moose Lodge. As we heard earlier, three members of Kaiser Moose Lodge back in 1946, actually three coaches, decided that they wanted to do something to honor J. Edward Kelly. So this ceremony has been going on, as we've heard. This is the 78th year. Stu, thank you for representing the 78th Lightning Division. On behalf of Kaiser Moose Lodge 662, I have here the envelope that Principal Dr. Ravenscroft gave to me just before the ceremony. It's been sealed, so let's see who the winner is. The winner of the 78th J. Edward Kelly Award, Mr. Anthony Mealy. extraordinary honor to be nominated for the Kelly Award. I am grateful to be sharing this experience along with two of my classmates, teammates, and close friends, Gabe Ryan and Kagan Youngbud. 
Congratulations, Gabe and Caden. I would like to welcome members of the 78th Lightning Division and their families, all other veterans and current service members along with their families and other distinguished guests. I would also like to recognize the people and organizations that made this Kaiser High School tradition possible and are dedicated to preserving the memory of Jonah Edward Kelly. Thank you, Moose Lodge 662, Jeff Staggers, American Legion, Boyce Hauser, Post 41, President of the Kelly Society, Randy Cirillo, and other members of the Society. PSC President, Dr. Gilmore, Mineral County Board of Education, Superintendent Ravenscroft, Assistant Superintendent Wilson, Principal Dr. Ravenscroft, Assistant Principal Ms. Droppelman, Ms. Roadtruck, and volunteers. All other staff and students of KHS and Mer Mineral County Votech, once again, thank you for your dedication and hard work. We are here today to honor Jonah Edward Kelly. As a student and athlete at Kaiser High School, he displayed leadership, confidence, and excellence that later led to him being the only Congressional Medal of Honor recipient from Kaiser High School. He was a young man from our small town in West Virginia who died a hero's death while violently saving the lives of his men. We cannot begin to imagine the ripple effect that Ed Kelly had, not just on the war, but also on this world. Not only did his courage, selflessness, and ultimate sacrifice save the lives of his comrades, but it impacted their families for generations to come. Too often, Ed Kelly is talked about as an award instead of a person. We focus on what you need to do instead of what you need to be. Ed Kelly was a man of integrity, determination, humility, dignity, and patriotism. He exhibited characteristics at the young age of 21 years old that many people strive an entire lifetime to achieve. George Patton said, it is foolish and wrong to mourn the men who died. Rather, we should thank God such men lived. Not only is that true of Jonah Edward Kelly, but all other men and women who have made the ultimate sacrifice to preserve our freedom. Ed Kelly had coaches, teachers, and family in his life that impacted him and influenced the decisions he made. I also have been blessed with countless dependable role models in my life. I would like to thank some of these people who helped shape who I am. Coach Beiser, you were my first high school coach and you taught us how to represent KHS on and off the field. You instilled in us the true meaning of Kaiser Pride. Coach Steven, you took over as head coach during a challenging time with COVID. You held our team together and taught us how to face adversity and still be successful. You pushed me to do better not only on the field, but off the field as well. I cannot thank you and the entire football coaching staff enough. Coach Del Signor, you challenged me to improve at my position at every practice. Thank you for pushing me to do my best. Coach Staggers, you taught me not to take anything for granted, and that is a lesson I will carry with me through the rest of my life. Wes Hours, you are my very first football coach. You dedicated a lot of time teaching us how to learn and play the game. You helped develop my passion for football. Coach Fury, I was lucky enough to have you as a coach and a teacher. I could stand up here all day and tell you how good of a teacher, coach, and person you are. I'll just say this and I'll think you understand. You know how much football means to me. When everybody thought I was too small to play football, you didn't. Thank you for always believing in me. I would also like to thank all of the basketball coaches that I have played for and the assistant track coaches for helping me these last four years. I've always been lucky enough to have many dedicated and caring teachers both in school and Sunday school. Every one of them has helped to shape who I am in my education and in my faith. Mr. Miller and Mr. Zaffron, while math and chemistry were not my strongest subjects, you always made your classes fun. It was the only two B's I got in high school, so today I would like to thank you both for being great teachers, but for not giving me a B. Ms. Sin, it's been a while since you were my teacher. I want you to know that you left a lasting impression on me with the compassion and dedication you always showed us. I wouldn't be here today if it weren't for the support of my family and friends. To my group of friends and their families, I could not have asked for a better group to go through these past 12 years with. Uncle John and Uncle Jason, thank you for always supporting me, even if it had to be from a distance. 
Grammy and Pappy, thank you for being there for me and for coming to my events. I'm grateful to always have you here. Pappy, thanks for inspiring me to become a history teacher. Grammy, I will always be your little man. Benjamin, even though we compete at everything, I will always support you, always do your best. Dad, thank you for being a role model. You were always there for me, even after working long shifts. You would still get me to anywhere I needed to go on time. You taught me the importance of being humble. You didn't always tell me what I wanted to hear, but you told me what I needed to hear. God has blessed me in many ways, none better than with my mother who gave me. My mom couldn't solve all my problems or fix all my failures, but she always knew what to say and do. Just talking to her made everything seem better. I know there are many nights she was exhausted after leaving the daycare and going to all of her games. But she always had the strength to take care and hold our family together. If it wasn't for my mom, I can honest, honestly say I would not be here today. I would still be at my house trying to figure out how to get this tie on. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. There's no one better than you. In closing, I would like to leave you with a challenge. Every year that passes is a year farther from the greatest generation. We need to honor and remember them along with all of our current service members, veterans, and their families. Let us not forget the legacy of Jonah Edward Kelly and a thousand of brave souls like him. Thank you and God bless. Good morning. I would like to begin. I would like to say what an honor it is to have been nominated for such an esteemed award, especially alongside two of my brothers and the most outstanding people I know. I don't think I, should be, I could be sharing the stage with anyone more deserving than these two. Congratulations to you both. I would like to make sure the following were formally recognized for making all of this happen. The 78th Lightning Division members, Superintendent Ravenscroft, Assistant Superintendent Miss Wilson, and Mineral County Board of Education, Kaiser Moose Lodge 662 and Jeff Staggers, the American Legion Boyce Hauser Post 41, President Randy Cirillo and the members of the Ed Kelly Society, Vice Principal Ms. Droppelin, Principal Dr. Ravenscroft, Central Office Employees, the Mineral County Technical Center, Kaiser High School students and staff, President of Potomac State College Dr. Gilmer, and all other distinguished guests such as all veterans and current members of the armed forces and first responders. And last but not least, Ms. Road Truck and all the volunteers who have worked so hard to set this program up. Thank you. With that being said, we should all know that this day isn't about any of us, but rather to honor a natural born leader, God fearing man and patriot who gave the ultimate sacrifice so that we could be here today. We recognize Mr. Jonah Edward Kelly for his prime example of selflessness, the acts of bravery he has performed, as well as the life he lived before giving all of his all on the battlefield, which has influenced and created a path for many of us today. We know that Mr. Kelly's life was cut short at the young age of 21 due to his heroic act in Germany that saved many lives and changed the momentum of the war. Before this, Ed strived to be a better person and exceeding, exceeded in being an honest, hardworking leader but strived as a student athlete and believer in Christ and happened to be a Kaiser High graduate. The saying that you may have heard before, freedom isn't free, is nothing but the truth. The price of freedom is one that only Mr. Kelly, his family, and other military families know, which is why I'm extremely humbled to be a part of honoring the legacy of Jonah Edward Kelly. And for that, I would like to say thank you. I would also like to say thank you to all the coaches I've had over the years, especially Coach Steven, Coach Staggers, and Coach Fury. Coach Steven, you've helped me get to where I am today on and off the field. I wouldn't have wanted to spend countless hours in the weight room with anyone else coaching me up and pushing me harder. Thank you for putting me into the leadership role you did and teaching me ownership through it all. Coach Staggers, whether it was about sports or not, you have always been there to listen and guide me through any situation I am in. You're always the first one to coach me up and the first to congratulate me. I'm glad to have you in my corner. Thank you. Coach Fury, from t-ball to middle school basketball and out track, you've helped me grow as a person and as an athlete. Growing up in sports, you've always been there in some way. 
With that, I know what, whatever you have me do, it's for my best interest, and your confidence in me is sincere. Thank you. To my teammates, I want to say thank you for showing up every day and pushing each other to get better on and off the field. Thank you for creating a brotherhood and memories that will never fade. Most importantly, keeping each other in check during bad times and celebrating during the good. You all are my second family, and I hope that we can stay connected throughout the years. Thank you. Miss Stephanie Stephen, I would like to thank you for introducing me to teaching and show me what I want, might want to do with the rest of my life. You found ways to make learning fun to me again and made each lesson interesting. Although you have only been my teacher for one year, I feel as if you have been one of the most influential in guiding me into the future. Julie, you're the best teacher I've had, but, not, but that's not who I think of you as. You are truly my second mom. Thank you for being, bringing me and Bob and as one of your own and allowing us to be influ an influence on your son. You do so much for us, and although t sometimes it may feel as if it goes unnoticed, but I speak for your kids and your students when I tell you that it doesn't. We love and appreciate you. Nana and Pappy, from, the day, from day one, you have been here for me and did what's best for me no matter what. You've taken Mom and I in, helped us on numerous times in need, and we appreciate you. you do, we do. You do all you can to make sure us kids have fun, something to eat, and feel supported when we're doing what we love. The memories we have with you are unmatched and will never re be replaced. I love you. Mama and Papa, you may be the hard most hardworking people I know. You're family oriented and make sure everyone has what they need. You may worry too much, but I assure you that everything and everyone will be all right. You put everyone before yourself and all and we all know that. I've learned more than you, more from you than you may realize, and I am forever, forever grateful for that. You've put a good path in place, and I know you'll be there supporting me and helping me wherever I might go in life. Grandma and Pap Claus, although I might not be blood, no one would ever know. You've taken me in and treated me like the other grandchildren. I love you, and I'm glad to have you both in my life to rely on whenever I may need to. My siblings. Where, whether you know it or not, you push me to be better more, more better than anyone ever could. You are my reason. I love each and every one of you and hope that you can look to me as much as I look to you. I want to let you know I'll always be here for you and I'll do my best to be the brother you need. Jasher, I hope you're looking down and you're as proud of me as I am you. You're the toughest person I think I'll ever meet. From day one, you were a fighter. I look up to you and everything I do, and you are my biggest inspiration. Although it wasn't long, God blessed us with the time you had every day. I look to you, and you remind me to never take anything or anyone for granted. I love you, little brother. Jeremy, I don't appreciate you coming in and stealing my mom the way you did, but I'm glad that you did. I wouldn't want anyone else loving my mom and taking care of her the way that you do. On top of that, You've stepped up and became a father figure in my life. You are the perfect man of the house and dad to Connor and Peyton, which I have taken great notice of and will try to replicate, although it will be hard. I'm also glad that you, have, that you teach me about what you have taught me about the outdoors and how to love it. Dad, although times have not always been ideal, I still want you to know how much I love you and wouldn't want anyone else as my dad. What you do for your, my, my brothers and I is unmatched and does not go unnoticed. They might not realize how true it is yet, but you are, and I know you try to your hardest to be the best dad you can for us. As we have discussed before, we both know that not every example may have been the, the good example, but the one that was right for me to learn from and be better than. From everything and a lot of ways, you've shaped me into the man I am today, and I like to think I carry many of your characteristics. At the end of the day, I'm proud to be able to say that you're my dad. Thank you. Finally, my mother. As this may be the only time I get to formally recognize you, I want everyone else to realize how great you really are. To begin, to, I've, I like to believe that God broke the mold with you. You truly are amazing in every way. And I'm proud to be able to call the most caring, understanding, hardworking, and strongest woman I know, my mother. 
Although you may not know what position I'm playing sometimes, even after coming to every game, sitting countless hours in the car waiting for practice to be over, or traveling from camp to camp, listening to me talk during all of those road trips, I know how much you truly do care and love watching me do what I do. Better yet, after all that, you somehow managed to round all of us kids up and get us to church and wherever else we may need to be while still putting a meal on the table. Through all of our disagreements, I know you will always be there for me, and at the end of the day, everything you've done to keep me safe and protected has not gone unnoticed. I love you, Mom, and I wouldn't want anyone else to have that title, not only because you are perfect, but because I don't think anyone else could do the things you do. Thank you. In today's world, I feel as if we caught up in, get caught up in many meaningless situations. We take our rights and freedoms for granted. We forget what has been done for the country and the lives we live today. Many people tend to forget how convenient their lives are and live life too fast. As I said before, freedom isn't free. My, my challenge to you would be to take time out of your day to thank the veteran you see while you're pumping gas, waiting in line at the grocery store, or sitting, at, sitting next to at a sporting event, and any other former or current members of the armed forces you may be fortunate enough to know. Thank the most important people in your life for all they have done and in in, for you, and let them know they are appreciated by you. And most importantly, take time to thank God. Thank him for the men and women that have laid down their lives just as Mr. Kelly did. Thank him for the things you have that others may not, and thank him for the family he has surrounded you by, biological or not. Slowly, slow down, recognize your blessings, and thank the ones who are responsible for them. People who display characteristics such as endless determination, integrity, pride for oneself, responsibility, courageousness, and compassion, as Jonah Edward Kelly did, have cultivated and inspired many people of all ages, such as myself. I would like to say thank you again. Congratulations to Caden and Anthony. You, are both, are most, you both are most deserving. Thank you, and God bless. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First off, I would like to say just how big of an honor it is to be nominated for this prestigious award. To be able to represent someone who made the ultimate sacrifice for his people and for his country is a huge honor. I would also like to congratulate Gabe and Anthony for being nominated alongside me. These two have been good friends of mine all through high school, and I am proud to share the stage with these two great men. I wish both of you the best in your futures and whatever they may hold. Now, I would like to give thanks to the following people. President of the Kelly Society, Randy Cirillo. Members of the Kelly Society, Kaiser Moose Lodge 662. American Legion, Boyce Hauser Post 41. Colonel Frisbee. Stuart Brandau. President of Potomac State College, Dr. Gilmer. Superintendent Ravenscroft. Assistant Superintendent Wilson. The Board of Education. Kaiser High School Secretaries and Guidance Counselors. Principal Ravenscroft, Assistant Principal Droppelman, Mrs. Rotruck, KHS staff members, and students. Without the hard work of these people, this ceremony today would not be possible. I would also like to take time to thank the 78th Lightning Division members and all veterans for devoting part of their lives to ensure that you and I have the freedoms we do in the United States of America. With all this said, the reason we are here today is to not talk about my or my fellow nominees' accomplishments. We are here to honor Kaiser High School's very own Jonah Edward Kelly. Growing up, Ed Kelly was a natural born leader that would excel in all he did through his great determination and effort. He would become a role model for his community through service, sports, scholarship, faith, and more. We honor Ed Kelly for making the greatest sacrifice for his people and for his country. Ed Kelly single-handedly shortened the war by several months and was awarded the Congressional Medal of Honor for his heroic actions. Ed Kelly is a true showcase of bravery, leadership, and character. Nothing that I may go on to do with my life will ever amount to what Ed Kelly did. Without Ed Kelly and other individuals like him, we would not be able to live our lives without fear of attack and would not have the freedoms we have today. Brave leaders like Ed Kelly are the reason why you and I should be proud to call ourselves Americans. 
It is important for us Americans to never take for granted our veterans and the sacrifices they have made for our country. Thank you to all current armed forces, veterans, and POW MIAs for protecting the great freedoms we have in America. Now, I would like to thank some people for helping me along the way. First off, I would like to thank Scott Fury for always being there to help me, whether it's an engineering project, sports, or even balancing the equalizer for my car stereo. I want you to know just how big of a role model you are for the community for continuing to coach and teach given your situation. I would also like to thank Mr. Miller for teaching the AP Computer Science class at the high school. Without this class, I would never have found my passion for coding. I would also like to give thanks to the other teachers I've had through high school as well. If not for their hard work and care, I would not have become the student I am today. Next, I would like to thank my teammates and coaches of the football team. My experiences playing football have taught me countless life lessons about things like responsibility, accountability, determination, hard work, and more. There is nothing I enjoyed more in high school than playing home games under those Friday night lights. I wouldn't trade all the memories and good times I had with coaches and teammates for the world. Thank you to the baseball team for being the bright point in my day for my senior year. I would like to thank my teammates for making practices fun while also working hard and making my senior season so worthwhile. I'd like to thank my baseball coaches for giving me the opportunity to represent my school playing the sport I love. Thank you to all my coaches for teaching me not only about sports, but teaching me about worth ethic and life lessons I will forever cherish. I would like to give a special thanks to my athletic trainers that have helped me stay on the field and healthy through high school, especially Big Mike, Ruta, and Chuck for the sheer amount of time they spent putting athletic tape on me before practices and games. I would like to thank Jack Stan as well for putting my football belt in my pants before every game. After I had to change pants at halftime versus Hampshire in my junior year, Jack saved the day like a scene out of a movie with how fast he could put a belt through a pair of football pants. From there, it became our own little pregame ritual, which later spread to him doing that for the most of the team. Thank you to my two closest friends, Connor and Ethan, for making high school an, un an experience of unforgettable memories. I hope we never grow apart, no matter what our futures may hold. I would like to give one more thank you to any of my friends for the good times we spent together and the memories made. Thank you, Nana and Pap, for always encouraging me to go out and have fun and not get caught up in the game. You two have been some of my biggest supporters in high school, and I just want you to know how much you're truly appreciated. I would like to give an extra thanks to Pap for letting me take the Corvette to prom and homecoming. My mom car doesn't quite compare to a V8. <laughs> Ninny, thank you for being my biggest supporter and my partner in crime. I always enjoy going out to eat with you and going to church with you. I will be there always for you if you need any help. And I know I don't say it enough, but I love you. I guess now's the part where I have to thank my brother Ashton. You may know him as Meatball, Peanut, or who knows what. Over the past year, we've gotten much closer than I would have ever imagined. I'm thankful you've finally grown up a little and is no longer your only goal to find out how you can annoy me. I love you and just want you to know that I will always be the better skier. Mom, I love you. Thank you so much for being the person I can come to and talk about anything. Whether it is me asking if a friend can come over because I know dad will say no, or talking to you about school. Thank you for always checking in on me, but please quit talking to me about girls. <laughs> dad, I can't truly thank you enough for the countless hours you've put into work to provide for our family. I am forever thankful for my biggest mentor, role model, and coach. Thank you for the many life lessons and the fun times had. I love you. Next, I would like to give all glory to God for the many blessings, guidance, hardship, wisdom, and love. If there was one thing I could change about today, it would be to have my pappy here with us today. He was one of my biggest supporters, and I know that he really wanted to live to see me graduate. I hope that through all I do, I can make you proud. I love you. Now, before I leave you all today, I would like to give everyone a challenge. If there is one thing that stuck with me most from my coaches, teachers, peers, and family, it is to never settle. By that, I mean you should always strive to be the best in, that you do in everything that you do. <laughs> I'm an extremely competitive person and like to try to be the best at everything that I do. If we could all embody this mindset, imagine the changes it could make in our community, 
our schools, and even our lives. So if there's one thing I could leave you all with today, it would be to never settle and always reach for the stars. Thank you, and God bless. Hello, everybody. The J. Edward Kelly Memorial Trust Scholarship has evolved over time. From 1946 to 1976, the winner received only the traditional Ed Kelly watch, and the runners-up received pen and pencil sets and later identification bracelets. The first scholarship, as the program highlighted in the beginning, was not awarded till 1977. It was for $100. Eventually, the award increased incrementally until it reached its current value of $6,000. And as you heard in the program, once we got beyond the post $100 era, all nominees for the award agreed to share the scholarship equally, regardless of the eventual winner. As it's already been mentioned, that tradition continues today. Aunt, Gabe, Caden all agreed to share the scholarship. I'm not surprised at all. I know all three of them, and this reflects their character both on and off the field. Their sense of team will carry them far in life. As a result of their decision, each of these young gentlemen will receive a $2,000 scholarship from the J. Edward Kelly Memorial Trust. At this time, we would also like to acknowledge the program's relationship with the 78th Lightning Division. Without the financial support of the 78th, we would not have been able to provide scholarships at the levels that we do today. For years, they have supported us this way, and also by attending our events year after year after year. Within the past, I believe, 10 years, 12 years, they transferred their 78th Division Veterans Association Trust Fund to us. It is now the J. Edward Kelly Memorial Trust Fund. Today, we are honored to be in the presence of one of the 78's finest members, Mr. Stuart Brandau. He started attending the Kelly ceremony around 1980 with several dozen other 78th veterans. Unfortunately, he is the lone member of the 78th that is still able to attend our event. Mr. Brandau was a machine gunner in the 78th. He's a veteran of the Battle of the Bulge. He was one of the first Americans to cross the Rhine, and he's also a recipient of a Bronze Star. True American hero, Stu Brandau. <clears throat> so at this time, in addition to the scholarship, we are extremely honored and proud present Aunt Gabe and Caden a plaque memorializing this occasion and in remembrance of the 78th Lightning Division. Congratulations, Aunt Gabe and Caden.
Also, as you heard earlier in the ceremony, um, several years ago, Kaiser Moose Lodge 662 started awarding all nominees with a wristwatch. So at this time, I have the wristwatch on behalf of the moose. Would you please come forward to receive that? Anthony? Gabe? Caden. Also earlier in the ceremony, you heard Colonel Sean Frisbee thank Miss Carrie Rotruck for all she does for this award ceremony. She's done it for many years. And the Ed Kelly Society, Kaiser Moose Lodge 662, have a small token of our appreciation if she'd come forward. I'd like to thank all of our guests, students, staff, and especially Colonel Frisbee for attending today's ceremony. I'd like to congratulate Anthony, Gabe, and Caden. Thank you all for attending. I know that the Kelly Society has a short luncheon after this at Boyce Hauser Post 41. I'd also like to thank our students and staff uh, for doing a great job of getting here. Thank you all and have a safe trip.